Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, in a previous video, we took apart some of these cane mills that I'm needing to do some restoration work on. And uh, as promised, I took them out to get sandblasted. So uh, instead of me trying to clean these up in the shop myself, uh, just using up a lot of my time doing that, there's a commercial place here that does it. It's pretty reasonably priced. Drop them off, pick them up, everything's done. They went ahead and sandblasted as well as primed most of the parts. They primed it to keep, from, keep them from flash rusting. Now the rollers, I asked them not to prime uh, just because uh, we got to do some machining to them and so forth. So they didn't do those parts. And I really don't want to paint the areas and do the, the cane crushing and all that. But everything else uh, was primed. Now you will also notice that we got the rusty one back here in the back. This was that Chattanooga mill that we took apart that was so difficult to tear down. And uh, after talking with uh, the person that I was gonna rebuild this one for, he has decided not to proceed with restoring this particular mill. It is restorable, but it's gonna require a tremendous amount of work. Uh, there's a lot of uh, severe pitting on all the steel shafts over there. Um, and there are some other issues in there that we ran into as well. Some of them were in the video. Some of them I actually discovered afterwards. Uh, but after a long conversation with him uh, and kind of estimating what it would cost to do the work to get this one going, he's decided that he would rather look for a mill that's in a little bit better condition to restore rather than putting the money into this one. And to be honest with you guys, I, I, I tend to agree with his decision. So uh, this one uh, will not be restored, at least not here, not now. Um, who knows down the road? So, but we are going to do the the golden mills over here. We got a golden number one and a golden number two, and uh, these were while there's definitely some issues here we're going to have to deal with, nothing near as significant as this one back here. And I will say that in my first video. I made some comments that may have sounded a little bit like I didn't like these Chattanooga mills or they were not as good as the Golden Mills. That was not my intention. What I was really saying was is that this particular one was in pretty rough shape. It had nothing to do with the manufacturer. It had everything to do with um, the fact that it was just in the condition that it was in. It had not been stored you know, under shelter been left out in the weather, et cetera, et cetera. I like these Chattanooga mills. The biggest downside thing I don't like about them is that they have the uh, the bronze inserts rather than Babbitt bearings, you know, and, and I'll say that at the time that they were built, that was a big plus because it was really easy to swap those bearings out. You just ordered a new set of bearings, took the old ones out, popped the new ones in. You didn't have to do any melting and remachining and everything like we have to do with these Babbitt bearings. Uh, but you just can't call up Chattanooga Mill anymore and Chattanooga Plow Company and, and order bearings anymore. So uh, because of that, it really makes those a little bit more difficult to deal with. It's doable. Um, and I've actually cast bearings for them in the past. But again, that was going to be more of the added cost was I was going to have to make patterns and get the foundry work done. And like I said, when you just added everything together, it was just going to it was more than what he wanted to put into it. And again, I don't blame him. So anyway, this is where we're at now. Uh, there is one issue with this number two mill uh, that we're gonna go ahead and take care of right now. And that is after they sandblasted this, it became evident that there's a crack in this top over here. We'll get you to look at it here in a minute, but it goes clear across. I believe that it is an old crack. It looks like it's been there for a while. I don't think it was anything that's happened uh, since we did this. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and braze that up and, and do a repair on it so that it will we'll hopefully last. So uh, without further ado, that's going to be today's project is uh, brazing up uh, this uh, housing and uh, hopefully getting it to where it'll last another however many years, get it, put her back in service where she can be used. Let's get over there and uh, show you the crack and we'll get started on it. Well, here you go. You can see the crack here that's in the top. It just starts up here and goes out and I thought it went all the way to the edge, but it looks like it actually stopped short somewhere right along in here, uh, which is nice. So um, I think what we're gonna do is game plan here is this first, I'm gonna get over the wire wheel. I'm gonna get all this primer off uh, so that we can braze it. Probably won't do the whole thing, but I'll get you know a section of it cleaned up here on both sides. 
Uh, we're going to take a drill and drill a hole down here at the end of this crack. And the reason for that is, is that when you've got a, ca a crack in cast iron, if you go in here and grind that out and start brazing it up, very often when you put the heat to it, the crack will just extend on out. It's just going to continue cracking down that line. But if you will go out a little bit past the end of the crack and drill a hole, it makes a stop to that crack. Uh, usually will. So that's going to be my game plan. And once we get every, that done, I'm going to come in here with a grinder. We will grind V this out uh, to give us a place for the braze to go in. We'll heat it up with a torch and go ahead and see if we can get this brazed up. Uh, don't think it'll be too bad of a repair, uh, but I probably shouldn't say that because as soon as I do, <laughs> it'll turn into a disaster. Keep our fingers crossed. But there we go. That's what we got to work with. All right, that's got it mostly cleaned up. I noticed there's another little place right here. I'm not sure if that's a crack or just uh, was a mark in the mold when they casted this and just got a line across it. Let's flip it over and see what's on the other side. I don't see the crack going through uh, on that other one, so I'm going to guess it's not a crack. See the crack running right up through here, and the crack. It may go to the edge. Let's we'll, we'll clean it up and see. <laughs> Looks like right in here that there was maybe an inclusion or something when this was poured, uh, which created a weak spot in the casting. So anyway, it is what it is. Let's see if we can straighten it out. I do think that that crack stops down here short. It doesn't, I don't see any crack on the end. Uh, so we're just going to kind of follow it out. We'll probably drill a hole down here pretty far just to make sure we get past it. But um, I think we're good here. I don't know if you can see the crack in the video or not, but I can see it stopping right about the time it goes into this little thicker fillet down here to where we go into this uh, rim. So we're going to drill a hole kind of right there in that area. And it would make sense that when it gets thicker down here, that was where it stops at. I'm just using a quarter inch drill bit. There we go. All right, here we go. We're just gonna follow that crack all the way down here. It looks like it makes a kind of a funny sharp angle there. What I want to do is I want to grind, but I don't want to go all the way through. I want to get down close to all the way through. But not quite all the way through because we want to leave some of that original surface on the other side. All right, I like the looks of that. I think we've got a good uh, area in there that we can braze into. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get ready to start our brazing process. Uh, like I said, once we get this bottom done, we'll flip it over and work on the other side uh, as well. So here we go, guys. Uh, we're gonna start by heating this up. And when I say heating it up, I wanna heat up the whole casting. Now we're gonna be focusing our heat in this area later on, but um, as we do this, we're gonna want heat throughout the whole casting. I don't wanna create a situation where it's cold over here and hot over here it's just going to want to cause that crack to open up so um, we're going to be putting some gentle heat pretty much everywhere you know once we kind of get the, the casting up several hundred degrees we will start focusing our heat in this area in fact i think i'm going to go to a larger rosebud tip uh, just to make this go a little bit faster let me uh, do that all right, I've gone to a larger uh, rosebud. This will just uh, make things go a little bit faster. And again, I'm heating up everything around. You'll notice I've got a, a fire blanket up underneath this thing, a heat resistant blanket. We will use that when we get through brazing to wrap this whole casting up in, let it cool down slow. I also have it sitting on a couple of fire bricks. The purpose of the fire bricks is to uh, just 
get a little bit of separation between the casting and the, the blanket down below just so we don't lose any heat through this thing. So uh, my goal right now is not to get this thing up to red hot throughout. I just want to get heat in it throughout. The ideal way of doing this would be to put it in an oven and heat it up in an oven. I don't have an oven in the shop to do that in. And I don't know why, but my wife doesn't like it when I put it in her kitchen oven. Never have really understood that, but um, it is what it is. So we'll just resort to the heat, to the torch here. I'm not too worried about this primer, guys. It's probably all gonna have to be stripped back off and redone, but uh, it's not gonna get in my way over here where I'm working, so I'm not too worried about it right now. We're getting some heat in here. I can actually see a little blue tint in the shiny part there. So we're gonna heat it up. Interesting, you see some oil seeping, seeping out. Got some porosity in that area there, it looks like. Got a little oil coming up through the casting. And it has broken all the way to the end now. That's all right, we're gonna braise it up. I'll tell you what, I may go ahead and uh, grind that out before we go any further. I was afraid it was gonna do that, but um, trying to heat it up a little bit evenly, I was hoping we wouldn't, but I was afraid we would. But let's, I'm gonna go ahead and grind that out before we continue heating. All right, guys, I've been working on heating this casting up now for probably a good 10 minutes. Really, again, trying to focus all the way around on it. But um, I'm starting to see a little bit of color out here on the edge where it was getting up kind of red. And that's where we want to start brazing at. So when brazing, you want to really get your metal up to about a, a dark cherry red color. Uh, with brazing, I always, if you watch a lot of my videos, you've heard this before, but with brazing, we're using dissimilar materials to join something together. So in this case, we're using our brazing rod, which is a, either a brass or a bronze alloy. And uh, that's gonna uh, join up with the cast iron and hold it together. And it works really well, surprisingly well, a lot better than most people give it credit for because the, the bronze will actually molecularly bond to that uh, base material, the cast iron material, and kind of grip a hold of it and hold it together. And uh, it's a very strong repair in cast iron. Uh, brazing is different from welding. In welding, you're actually melting the base material and in some cases putting a filler rod, filler material in there. Usually that filler material is the same type of material. Uh, cast iron does not weld very well. Even when we do welding techniques that uh, people consider welding because it's like with an arc welder, you're using a nickel rod. You're still really kind of brazing it together, using a dissimilar material to join it together. You're not really using cast iron to join it. There are some people that are kind of brazing or welding with cast iron. I'm not a big fan of true welding where you melt that base material though, because when you melt that base material, what happens is, is you change the, the, the structure of that metal um, from the cast iron structure. And whenever you melt it and it re-solidifies, it's not in the same structure as it was when it was just cast iron that cooled down nice and slow inside the uh, the uh, the mold. And very often, whenever you melt that material, you're just melting a really short, small area there. And when you, you uh, it solidifies, it, uh, it wants to uh, be very brittle in that area that you, that you welded together. And you end up with a, a brittle weld that is very prone to cracking. With the uh, bronze here and this brazing rod, when we weld with it or braze with it, it is more flexible and uh, we'll really go through that process of the metal cooling down and getting some shrink and everything. It's a lot more forgiving and it, it really does just a better job all the way around. So 
I'm using a brazen rod here. These brazen rods have a flux material on them. This flux uh, helps it to stick and uh, you're just kind of melting it and putting it down in between there. Now where that hole is, it wants to be a little bit stubborn and kind of melt out and go out the other side. So I'm kind of being real careful here and not trying to melt that rod out the other side there. So guys, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm switched over to a smaller tip that will give me a little bit more control. I need to kind of fill in this uh, braised material a bit more than what we got. And uh, with that big rosebud tip, we were just kind of blowing it all over the place. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of coming in here with this brazen tip still a bit on the large size, but we got a large part that we're grazing on. But this just gives me a lot more control and allows me to get more filler material in there without blowing it around all over the place. in here on this side now and V things out. All right guys, what I've done over here is I've put a uh, V in there and I ground down till I was just starting to see a little bit of that bronze showing through, which means that I'm pretty well ground it all the way through and uh, we're going to go ahead and fill it in on this side as well. I'm going to start with the uh, rosebud again. When that braise starts laying in there, it just kind of flows. If it's not flowing, you probably don't have your temperature up hot enough. guys I think we're through brazing so what we're going to do now is just uh, wrap this thing up real good in the blanket and we'll go off and let her cool down all night long nice and slow this one uh, wish I had another blanket to go on it but this will be fine I think we will uh, just leave it here. All right. Tell you what, I'll put this weight on top. That'll keep that kind of closed up. All right. Well, guys, it is another day. This has cooled down overnight. And I'm gonna take a look at what we got. So we got a lot of braise in there, that's good. And I'm going to take a wire wheel, kind of knock all this uh, glass and stuff. The flux kind of turns into a glass and probably hit it with a uh, um, flap disc to just kind of smooth it up a little bit. And it looks like we got some other places that where the metal and stuff is kind of peeling out. So we'll probably clean that up with the wire wheel. We'll have to reprime this. No big deal. So let's get in here and do this. 
couple guys after some grinding and cleaning it up the top looks good um i will probably come in here with a little bit of body filler and just you know tune that up a little bit before we paint it but the main thing is that we got a good solid repair that i'm happy with there the bottom side oh, let's flip it over looks good as well um this side won't really be visible with the uh in the final setup but again main thing is we got a good solid repair so i'm happy with that and i'm happy with how this turned out i think it's going to be just fine and should never be a problem again well there we go guys i got it all finished up here a coat of primer on there covers up that color mismatch um, i did put just a little bit of body filler in a couple of those little areas in there and sanded it back down uh, which smooths it up and makes it look real nice but the repair is pretty much invisible from the top. If you look, flip it over to the bottom, uh, I did leave a little bit extra braise down in the bottom there. I did smooth it up a little bit. Uh, you can tell it's been repaired, again, from the bottom, but that's the side that nobody's going to see. And uh, when I make repairs like this, I, I don't try to completely hide them. I want uh, the next person that comes along that has to work on this mill to realize that, yeah, there was a repair made. Uh, you need to leave a little evidence of that. Uh, just to make it easier if there's someone has to come in here and do something again down the road. But there you go. Uh, this piece is all fixed up. It's a uh, shot with some fresh primer and uh, we're going to let that dry real good and it'll be ready for some paint and to reassemble when we're ready to reassemble this mill. Well, there you go, guys. That is going to be a wrap on this episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little exercise in brazing and repair. My favorite method for repairing cast iron. A lot of opinions out there on the best way of doing it, but this has routinely and time and time again been the most reliable method I have found is brazing. Uh, it does a good job, holds up well, and uh, it's fairly easy to do. So uh, anyway, that's, that's how I go about doing it. And there you go. That'll wrap up another episode here, guys. Uh, with that, as always, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciate. It. Helps out a bunch with the uh, analytics on the channel. Uh, big, huge thank you to supporters of the site out there. Hit the bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And uh, with that, guys, we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.